You probably thought that the thumbnail was going to be a bait and switch for the Sherman or the Panzer III, but nope. I actually believe the M3 Medium is one of the most underrated tanks of World War II. The M4 and the Panzer III have their detractors and their followers, whereas everyone either hates the M3 or just doesn't care. People look at the goofy setup and assume it's an awful tank, but if you really look at it, it's not all that bad. After all, I can think of at least one tank that had a similar setup and was much worse. <clears throat> but by no means am I saying that the M3 was a great tank just that it wasn't awful either. To understand why the M3 is the way that it is, you have to look at what's going on in the war at this point. At that time, the US didn't have any capable medium tanks, and the British had just lost a good portion of theirs at Dunkirk, so they needed a tank with a 75mm and fast. They didn't have time to develop a turret large enough to house a 75mm, as no one had tried it before, so they pretty much stuck a 75mm in the hull of the M2 medium and made some other changes. It was a stopgap designed to hold down the fort until the Sherman could be developed. The US never believed that the M3 was the peak of vehicle design. The M3 delivered something very important to the Allies, and that was a reliable, mobile, and heavily armed tank that gave them an even chance with the Germans in Africa. With the 75mm, the M3 could outrange the short barrel Panzer III's and IVs that were being used by German forces in Africa. At that point, the most common tank gun the British had was the two-pounder, so you can imagine what a shock the 75mm was. I will burn like the brightest star. You're gonna burn, alright. Not only that, but the highly effective HE shell fired by the 75mm gave Allied tank crews a way of thoroughly dispatching enemy anti-tank guns. The primary issues that plagued the M3 were not of the vehicle itself. These issues being of ammunition quality and that the Germans had a more comprehensive understanding of combined arms warfare. Among British crews, the M3 was well liked, with one officer saying, it was fairly fast with a possible road speed of about 25 miles per hour, well armored, and considered capable of outshooting an enemy tank or anti-tank gun except for the 88. The Grant crews found their new tank and armament ideal, and we look forward to meeting the Panzers on more or less even terms. Most people assume that the M3 is extremely cramped, but it's not nearly as bad as one would assume. After all, the turret ring diameter is only 9 inches smaller than that of the M4, but with a much smaller 37mm gun. That isn't to say that the M3 isn't cramped in some places. The gunner and loader for the 75mm certainly were. But all things considered, it's not that bad. In the Grant, the British were able to get the crew down to 6 instead of 7, and the US eventually followed suit. The M3's armor, though riveted on most models, was on slightly better footing than its contemporaries. A British officer commented, It is apparent that the Grant tank can handle a lot of punishment. In one instance, the Grant received a total of 31 hits, with only 3 shots proving to cause any significant damage. This kind of toughness went away with the arrival of tanks like the Panzer III-L and Panzer IV-F2. The M3 wasn't used by the British or the Americans for very long. As soon as the M4 became available, the M3 was phased out fairly quickly. It's not hard to see why. The M4 offered all the advantages of the M3 without any of the quirks, or the off-putting look. And here I am again, like your own reflection repeated in a hall of mirrors. That makes me one ugly son of a bitch. The M3 continued to be used late into the Pacific, however, as the Japanese armor threat was minimal at best, non-existent at worst. The combination of 37mm canister shot and 75mm high explosive was extremely effective against infantry. The Australians would even continue to use the M3 until the 1950s. But perhaps the M3's largest contribution to the Allied victory in World War II was not in its strength as a combat platform, but as a basis for other vehicles. After all, it served as a stepping stone for the M4, and as a platform for various self-propelled guns and armored recovery vehicles, the most profound of the lot being the M7 Priest, though the M7 eventually came to resemble a Sherman more than a Grant or Lee. So I guess the short version of what I'm saying is this. The M3 was far from perfect, but it was designed for a very specific purpose, and it went above and beyond in fulfilling that purpose. And though it quickly became outdated, it held the line long enough for better tanks to be developed. Was it cramped and awkward? Yes but it was also a reliable and hard-hitting tank. It might not be the absolute most underrated tank of World War II, but I feel it is often overlooked, and could use some much needed attention. As always, thanks for watching. Keep an eye on my community page for a poll in the next video.